Hey everybody, I'm Justin. Welcome to my channel, Justin Hits the Trail. Today I'm going to talk about a newer piece of gear for me, and that is the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Double Wall. I have a handful of nights using this tent with my girlfriend Anna, and so I have a good grasp on how it's going to perform. So I'm going to get this set up, then I'll go over the specs, some of the pros, some of the cons, why I went with this tent over other options, and my overall thoughts on it. So stick around. Okay, so here we are. This is the tarp tent, double rainbow, double wall, all nice and set up. So let's go over some of the specs on this. So this is a true two person tent, as in it has a 50 inch floor. It's not tapered. It is a rectangular 50 by 88 inch floor. Now I should mention that this is the sill nylon version. Uh, I got this about a month before they released the polyester version, and since then I think they've even released a newer version of this tent. On their website, this sill nylon version was listed at 2.6 pounds. However, I did replace the Easton stakes that it came with with some MSR Groundhog Minis, and surprisingly these are just a touch lighter. So I actually replaced them with slightly heavier stakes, but I think they have better holding power. On top of that, I added a footprint to it. So the packaged weight with my Polycro footprint, my upgraded stakes, and all the stuff sacks, I got right about three pounds for this tent. Okay, so clearly this is a different lighting. It's a different day. It is the next morning. Of course, as soon as I got the tent set up, uh, my mic cut out, and it started raining. So uh, it is the next morning, so let's continue where we left off at. So the tent is fully assembled, and since I have the rain fly on here, let's start talking about some of the specs of the Rainfly. So the Rainfly is made of a 30 denier double ripstop nylon. And when you look at the fabric, I mean, you can see the, the grid shape here in the fabric, and it's pretty water resistant. It's got a 5,000 millimeter hydrostatic head on it. So if a severe storm comes in, this thing's gonna keep that storm out of your tent. Even last night when it started raining, uh, there was never any sagging, no water got in the tent, it held up great. If we look up close at the zippers here, these are YKK zippers, nice and smooth, nice and durable. And if you look along the zippers here, I don't know if you can see it in this light, you can see some of the seam sealing. And this is one of the cons I would have with this tent, is it does not come seam sealed like that. That's one thing that tarp tent does in general that I'm not a huge fan of, is their seam sealing service. I feel like most brands, when you buy a tent, it comes seam sealed and waterproof, but Tarp Tent does not do that. You can buy a seam sealing service for $30, or they can ship you a seam sealing kit and you can do it yourself. Unless you get one of their premium Dyneema tents, then they do come seam sealed. While I still have the rain fly on, let's talk about some of the ventilation. If we look here, you can see the peak vents. It lets a good amount of the moist air out, so you prevent some of that condensation on the inside. And you can see here how it attaches. It's pretty simple. The rain fly attaches to the corners with little clips. There's another clip here at the arch pole. And of course, it gets staked out for the vestibule. And speaking of the vestibule, if we open this up, we can look in here and you can see the amount of space that you have for the vestibule. It's not a ton of space, but it is plenty enough to fit a backpack and some other pieces of gear. Okay, so let's quickly take the rain fly off and I'll show you what it looks like without the fly on, which is actually how I prefer to use it. Okay, so clearly here is the tent without the rain fly on it. Uh, the arch pole here is made out of aluminum. At the top, this cross strut is carbon fiber. 
there is an option to upgrade this aluminum arch pole with a carbon fiber pole. You just got to pay up a little bit for it. But of course, it will weigh just a hair less. Okay, so if we take a look over here, if we go inside the tent, even though their seam sealing service I do find is a negative, when you do get it, they do put some strips of the sealant across the floor here, and that'll help prevent your sleeping pad from sliding back and forth. Another thing I would like to point out here is the configuration of the doors. So if you're on this side of the tent, it's gonna zip down and to the right. And if I'm on this side of the tent, it will also zip down and to the right. The benefit of that is there's no wrong way to set the tent up. There's no dedicated head or foot end. You can flip it around and it's gonna be exactly the same. The con of that is if you are using this with a second person, someone's gonna be getting in at the head end of the tent and somebody's gonna be getting in at the foot end of the tent and have to work their way up. It's not that big of a deal, but it might bug somebody. So one of the benefits of this tent is that it does have a 50 inch wide floor. In here, I have my 25 inch wide, 72 inch long Nemo pad. So if you're just one person using this, this thing can be a palace. There is tons of space in there. Now, with a 50 inch floor, we should be able to fit two 25 inch sleeping pads in there. So let's check out what that looks like. Okay, so now we have two 25 inch wide pads in there. Got my old Big Agnes, my newer Nemo. So this is what it looks like. It's exactly 50 inches worth of sleeping pads and a 50 inch floor. And it fits very, very snugly, of course. Um, the only downside is because the walls of the tent angle slightly in, you know, you start getting some push up against the side here. So it works with two sleeping pads, but you know, it's gonna be a squeeze. And now we have it set up with how I've been using it with my girlfriend, Anna. We have one 20 inch wide pad and one 25 inch wide pad. They're both lying perfectly flat, not coming up on the sides. And in fact, if I do squish it against the side here, you can see I do have a couple inches of room to spare here on the side. So it's not cramped, it's not tight. I think it's actually a great amount of space in here if you have a 20 inch and a 25 inch wide pad. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the camera. I'll take you inside the tent, show you some of the little features in there and my overall thoughts on it. So here I am inside the tent. You can see it's a generous amount of room for one person. Uh, notice all of the mesh. This is one of the reasons I bought this tent was because of all the mesh. I wanted a good double wall tent that'd be great for stargazing. And this one fit the bill. At the top here, there's an extra piece you can buy. This is some extra storage you can purchase that you can hang from the top there. Uh, there's not tons of pockets in here. There's only one pocket on either side. You can see those here. So this barely weighs anything, didn't cost too much more. So I got it clipped in there. At the head and the foot end, we have these vents. So on those rainy or humid nights, you can pop these down, extra mesh, extra ventilation, always good to have. So here I am sitting up inside the tent. You can see I have a generous amount of headroom. I'm, I'm not even close to touching the top. So a nice peak height there. Um, side to side, it is a little snug if two people are trying to sit up in here. Uh, the way I've been using it is just one person sits up while one person's laying down and it doesn't seem to be a problem, but a generous amount of headspace in here. So let's pop back out of the tent and I'll show you one of my favorite features of this tent. One of my favorite features of this tent is that you can set it up in full freestanding mode without the use of any stakes. If you have trekking poles that can extend to 140 centimeters, what you can do, you can tie the head of the trekking pole in here. You can clip the arch pole here and there's a little pocket that you can slide the tip of your trekking pole into. And so if you're camping on rock, sand, tough terrain, you can still use this tent and not have to worry about stakes. One of the other benefits of being able to set this up with your trekking poles, unlike all other non-freestanding tents, is that you can gently pick it up and shake it out just like you would with a regular freestanding tent. That's another good selling point for me. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go over the pros and cons and my final thoughts on this tent. Let's start with the pros. It's a lightweight tent. 2.6 pounds as it comes off their website. And for a true two-person tent with a 50-inch floor, that's pretty good. 
The reason I got this tent over other popular two-person tents, like let's say the Copper Spur or something like that, is that it doesn't have a tapered floor. Most two-person tents have a tapered floor that goes narrower than two wide sleeping pads, and I wanted to be able to fit two wide sleeping pads in here. So the floor width is a pro for me, along with the overall weight. It might not be ultra light, but three pounds or sub three pounds is pretty lightweight if you ask me. Another pro is just all the mesh, the stargazing. It's nice being able to lay back with the bug protection and the ability to put the rain flow on real quick if you wanna enjoy time under the stars. Another pro is the ease of setup. It's real quick and easy to set up. Just stake out the four corners, put the arch pole through, clip in the crossbar, you're good to go. The rain fly is really easy to attach with the clips and two stakes, goes up in no time. And if you leave the clips attached on the rain fly, you can set it up fly first if you're setting up in the rain. Another pro is the fact that you can't set it up the wrong direction. So if you're on uneven or sloped terrain, you don't have to worry about keeping your head up here and your foot down here. Just set it up whichever way, you're gonna be good to go. Another pro, and a lot of people might not care about this, I think it's a pretty cool looking tent. It's very untraditional. I just like the arch. It's a cool, it's a cool shape, it's a cool design. I like how it looks aesthetically. And another pro is obviously the feature that you can set it up with your trekking poles if you're not on great terrain. All right, now let's quickly go over the list of cons. One, it's not an ultra light tent. I mean, you can get those Dyneema tents that are sub two pounds for a two person tent, even some under one pound but this is not gonna break the bank, it's under $400 and doesn't take up a lot of space in your backpack. Another con is the sloped walls. Obviously they are not perfectly vertical, so if you're really concerned about two people being able to sit up at the same time, this might not be the right tent for you, but we've been making it work with two people, no problem. Another con, as I've already mentioned, is the seam ceiling. I feel like if you're making a high quality tent, just make it seam sealed and waterproof right off the bat. Don't upcharge people for seam sealing. That just seems like the right thing to do. Another con is if there is condensation on the tent rain fly, when you get out, your head is really close to the top of that rain fly, and you're probably gonna get that moisture on your head as you're exiting the tent. Not a deal breaker, but it is something to be aware of. One more con, if, if you can call it that, is an unnecessary feature, and that is porch mode. Now, I have not set this up in porch mode, but I will show a picture of what porch mode looks like right here. This is off their website, I did not do this. And this just seems completely unnecessary to me. If you're hiking with two trekking poles or two people hiking with two trekking poles, you can set up in porch mode if you want some extra ventilation when it's raining, but I feel like no one's ever gonna actually use this and you're just wasting extra weight with that fabric strip that you put in there. Okay, so that about sums it up for the tarp tent double rainbow double wall. Again, the reason I went with this tent over others is because it's got a true 50 inch wide floor for two people. It's got great ventilation, great stargazing with all that mesh, and you can set it up in freestanding or non-freestanding modes. So if you're in the market for a lightweight two-person tent, I would definitely put this on your list of considerations. I don't see a lot of tarp tent reviews on YouTube, so I figure they are due for one. They're putting out a lot of really cool products, so I'm excited to try more of their tents in the future. But that's gonna do it for now. Until next time, I'll see you out on the trail. Cheers.